Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a discovery of what seems to be a planet, but in a completely different galaxy, an extragalactic planet. And even though scientists have hinted on other extragalactic planets before, the discovery of this particular planet seems to be almost certain, and it actually was discovered using a very interesting technique. So let's talk a little bit more about this, but let's start with the idea of these extragalactic planets. Obviously, based on what we know about our own galaxy, we expect every other galaxy out there to possess a lot of different planets. But because of the distances involved and also because we can barely even tell a single star apart, it's almost impossible to find these planets using modern techniques. For example, you're probably aware that the majority of the planets in the Milky Way have been discovered using the transit method, by looking at the shadows of the planets passing in front of stars. But you have to remember that for these telescopes, like the TESS telescope or the Kepler telescope, when they look at these stars, all they're seeing is literally a single pixel. And the changes in brightness of this pixel, that's how they find these planets. If they were to use this technique by looking at another galaxy, in that similar pixel you'll actually have at least a few stars, possibly even an entire constellation. So trying to find an extragalactic planet using this or any of the other modern techniques, such as the radial velocity technique, is currently practically impossible. Okay, so how exactly did the scientists discover three previous candidates? Well, in every single case, first of all, it was usually completely by accident. Second of all, they weren't even looking for planets, they were actually looking at quasars and were studying their emissions. And third of all, the actual technique was normally referred to as the gravitational lensing or microlensing. In this case, completely by accident, something very, very briefly passed in front of the quasar. And that something was very likely a small planet that then produced a microlensing effect. The effect that's been used to discover a lot of other planets, usually relatively close to the center of the galaxy. For example, the first such discovery was done back in 1996, and all of this was detected in the system you see right here. Now, this is a galactic system, and if you really look closely at this image, you'll discover something a little bit unusual. It seems to have these two identical galaxies. Now, if you know anything about microlensing, you know that this is very likely the same galaxy, but it was just lensed by something in front of it. And that's exactly what happened here. The galaxy known as Eurasiris galaxy, the one that you kind of see right here, is lensing this distant quasar producing the gravitational lensing effect. And when the scientists were studying this back in 1996, there was actually a tiny tiny dip of micro lensing effect caused by a planet that was approximately three masses of planet Earth. And that was the first detection of a planet at a distance of about 4 billion light years away from us. Now, the thing is, because this planet is not going to be passing in front of this location for probably a few hundred million years, or possibly ever, it's going to be impossible to replicate this and to actually confirm or deny this. And so naturally, this is just a one-time detection, and the scientists think that they saw a planet. But at this point, we don't know. Then, we have this famous detection from 1999, a little bit closer to home, from the Andromeda Galaxy. And once again, this was detection of some sort of a planet, but this time by landing a star. And the planet was probably about six masses of Jupiter, with the event known as this. Now you can read more about this in the link in the description below, but there is unfortunately not much we know. Once again, it's a one in a lifetime event, it potentially contained an exoplanet, but chances are we'll never see this event again. And then the last detection using gravitational lensing was done back in 2018 from this beautiful quasar you see right here. This is known as RxJ1131-1231, and it's one of the most iconic images and one of the most iconic quasars that produces this beautiful Einstein's ring. But this time, it seems that the scientists were able to discover a group of what's known as rogue planets. So these are obviously planets that don't usually have a star and travel completely by themselves. Normally they contain their own sort of miniature system. This was a pretty exciting discovery a few years ago, and even today nothing similar has ever been discovered just yet. But that's basically gravitational landing in a nutshell. We usually find something once, but it's almost impossible to replicate this or to ever see this again. This time, however, the detection is very different, using a completely different technique, and in theory, can be seen again and thus confirmed. Although, not anytime soon, unfortunately. So, here's what the scientists found. So, first of all, this is once again coming from an iconic galaxy. 
In this case, a galaxy known as the Whirlpool Galaxy, or also known as M51. Now, even though we don't really see actual stars in this galaxy, we do see other really, really powerful objects. In this case, objects like black holes and neutron stars sometimes form what's known as the X-ray binary. That's essentially when a black hole or a neutron star starts stealing mass from its partner and starts producing ridiculously powerful emissions. And so that's exactly what the scientists in this particular paper were initially studying. They were actually looking at the X-ray binary and were looking at this in the X-rays using the Chandra Observatory. If we were to look at the galaxy in the X-rays, this is roughly where this binary is located, which means that I guess it's somewhere in this region right here. And so here is the zoomed in image of what they were looking at, with the object itself, as you can see, producing several pixels, which is already a little bit more accurate than looking for a typical planet here in the Milky Way galaxy. So anyway, they were looking at these pixels, studying this particular binary, and during their analysis, witnessed this, a dip. Now, normally these dips can happen for various reasons, mostly because these binaries are extremely unpredictable and they do produce a lot of various energy. So at least in theory, the emissions from the binary could have been changed by something entirely different. For example, it could have been some sort of a reshuffling of the magnetic field, which sort of temporarily stopped the emissions. But in this case, the emissions looked something like this. And that normally is a telltale sign that something just passed in front of the object, and usually that something has to be some sort of a planet. And that's pretty much what the scientists believe happened. They believe that a planet passed in front of this binary, temporarily causing it to dim just a little bit with just the same pattern that we've seen from a lot of different planetary detections here in the Milky Way. But instead of the optical light, this was in the X-rays, it just happened to produce the relatively similar observations. So in other words, this was a transit event, but it was an X-ray transit event. And assuming that this is indeed what happened here, this would be at a distance of about 28 million light years away from us, and the planet itself would be so much similar in size to planet Saturn. And on top of this, this planet seems to be orbiting the binary system. It's essentially orbiting the neutron star or a black hole, with the X-ray object itself being approximately 20 masses of the Sun. Now, because this particular event lasted for about three hours, this is sort of a telltale sign for a typical microlensing effect we've observed here from the Milky Way many, many times. So at the moment, there's almost no doubt that this is a planet, but it seems to be orbiting the system relatively far away from the center, at least 10 to possibly 20 astronomical units away from the center, which means that we might not actually see this object for at least 70, maybe 80, maybe even 100 years confirming this object would be somewhat difficult. Basically, by the time that this is confirmed, the current researchers are probably going to have grand-grandkids. But this is of course just a preliminary investigation and just a preliminary discovery. There's still a chance that maybe this only has an orbit of just a few years, and we might see it again in the next decade. But obviously, a planet is just one of the explanations, even though currently it's the best explanation. This could also maybe be just some sort of a leftover from the early star system, some sort of a thick cloud. But at the moment the scientists don't believe so, and they still believe that this is a planet. Also, if this is a planet, it means that this planet survived the initial first supernova that created the X-ray binary. And there's probably going to be another supernova in the future from the larger star. Which of course kind of implies that planets seem to be able to survive supernova and seem to still stick around the star system. But it's also important to understand that these particular detections are not very common either. They are actually kind of rare. As a matter of fact, the scientists in this paper weren't really specifically looking at the system for a long time. They were actually analyzing the data from the Chandra telescope that collected data from over 200 different X-ray binaries located in three different galaxies. The galaxy we just discussed, also the Pinwheel galaxy and the Sombrero galaxies. There were actually 119 similar systems in the Sombrero galaxy alone, but none of them exhibited similar patterns. Only in this particular X-ray binary showed us that there was a planet here, which suggests that, well, we probably are going to find more of them, assuming that we look at enough data. But for now, it's a pretty exciting discovery, but that's really all we know and all we're going to know for the next few decades, at least when it comes to this particular star system. On that note, thank you for watching, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. 
Either way, stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.